Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtz Gazat's videos on string theory. Let's uh, dust off one of my old um, advanced physics textbooks and see what I can remember. What is the true nature of the universe? To answer this question, humans come up with stories to describe the world. We test our stories. <laughs> that turtle is a reference to um, turtles all the way down. I forget which mythology it was from, but that the universe rested on the back of an entire turtle. I, <laughs> I didn't think they'd go that way first. I, I love it. And learn what to keep and what to throw away. But the more we learn, the more complicated and weird our stories become. Some of them yeah. are so much so that it's really hard to know what they're actually about. Like string theory, a famous, controversial and often misunderstood story about the nature of everything. Why did we come up with it? And is it correct or just an idea we should chuck out? <laughs> To understand the true nature of reality, we looked at things up close and were amazed. Wondrous landscapes in the dust, zoos of bizarre creatures, complex protein robots, all of them made from structures of molecules made up of countless, even smaller things, atoms. We thought they were the final layer of reality until we smashed them together really hard and discovered things that can't be divided anymore, elementary particles. But now we had a problem. They're so small that we could no longer look at them. Think about it. What is seeing? To see something, we need light, an electromagnetic wave. This wave hits... So here's one interesting thing that most people don't realize. Your eyes are radiation detectors. They're very specific radiation detectors capable of detecting 400 to 700 nanometer wavelength of light, which we call visible light, but... It's a radiation detector all the, all the same. ...surface of the thing and gets reflected back from it into your eye. The wave carries information from the object that your brain uses to create an image. So you can't see something without somehow interacting with it. On that same note, everything you see is, is a form of radiation. Not ionizing radiation, but for people that are afraid of radiation, you could argue that they should probably be afraid of everything. Seeing is touching, an active process, not a passive one. This is not a problem with most things. But particles are very, very, very small. So small that the electromagnetic waves we use to see are too big to touch them. Visible yep. light just passes over them. We can try to solve this by creating electromagnetic waves with more and much smaller wavelengths. But in quantum physics... Oh, that's adorable, trying to squeeze those together. I love it. Shorter wavelengths means more energy. So when we touch a particle with a yeah. wave that has... Yeah, short wavelengths, we're talking super high energy gamma radiation that passes through just about everything. <laughs> Especially the cosmic rays from space. Out of energy, it gets a kick. Caveat, as you get shorter, obviously certain things will stop gamma radiation, like uh, large amounts of lead. By looking at a particle, we change it. In quantum physics, we cannot know where a particle is and where it's going with absolute precision. This fact is so important that it has a name. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, the basis of all quantum physics. So what does a particle look like then? What is its nature? <laughs> we don't know. If we look really hard, we can see a blurry sphere of influence, but not the particles themselves. We just know they exist. But if that's the case, how can we do any science with them? We did what humans do and invented a new story, a mathematical fiction. The story of the point particle. <laughs> we decided that we would pretend that a particle is a point in space. Any electron is a point with a certain electric charge and a certain mass, all indistinguishable from each other. This way. For something to be purely a point, it would have to have no mass and zero dimensional, so 
you can use it to approximate something really small, but I think they're getting into what type of issues you'd have with that. Physicists could define them and calculate all of their interactions. This can be made precise in quantum field theory, and this solved a lot of problems. All of the standard model of particle physics is built on it, and it predicts lots of things very well. Some quantum properties of the electron, for example, have been tested and are accurate up to 0.0000000002%. Good job. While particles are not really points, by treating them as if they were, we get a pretty good picture of the universe. Not only did this idea advance science, it also led to a lot of real-world technology we use every day. But there's a huge problem, gravity. In quantum mechanics, all physical forces are carried by certain particles. But according to Einstein's general relativity, gravity is not a force like the others in the universe. If the universe is a play, particles are the actors, but gravity is the stage. To put it simply, <laughs> gravity is a theory of geometry, the geometry of space-time itself, of distances which we need to describe with absolute precision. But since there is no way to precisely measure things in the quantum world, our story of gravity doesn't work with our story of quantum physics. When physicists... Curvature of space-time will do that. ...tried to add gravity to the story by inventing a new particle, their mathematics broke down. And this is a big problem. If we could marry gravity to quantum physics and the standard model, we would have the theory of everything. So very smart people came up with a new story. They asked, what is more complex than a point, a line, or a string? String theory was born. What makes string theory so elegant is that it describes many different elementary particles as different modes of vibration of the string. Just like a violin string vibrating differently can give you a lot of different notes, a string can give you different particles. Most importantly, this includes gravity. String theory promised to unify all fundamental forces of the universe. This caused enormous excitement and hype. String theory quickly graduated to a possible theory of everything. Unfortunately, string theory comes... Well, I can understand the appeal of it from, you know, just a pure scientist, a pure physicist's uh, perspective. Um, this is one of those interesting examples where the dance between science and engineering can kind of overlap in that in engineering we can do certain things that we don't have a complete amount of explanation for how they work they just they just kind of do <laughs> um, nuclear physics was that way for a while including up until um making uh making uh, nu nuclear reactions uh in in a nuclear power plant um, an example would be the discovery of the neutrino that was given off uh, during a fission reaction. Um, to engineers, it was just this leftover amount of energy from the uh, energy equation of when you would ha have a neutron, split some uranium, you get the mass of the fission products, more neutrons, and the energy, and... For a while, new, uh, neutrinos, before we even called them neutrinos, were just this balance of energy and mass, uh, or, or not, not mass, excuse me, energy and spin that, w that was just left over from this reaction. And then it eventually got, got its name. So you can actually still advance technologically without completely understanding what's going on. And that's just fascinating. And of course, as our understanding evolves, then we can become capable of even more wonderful things. This is the, uh, the part of the dance of science and engineering that I find so fascinating. With a lot of strings attached. Much of the maths in I love dad jokes. Consistent string theory <laughs> does not work in our universe with its three spatial and one temporal dimensions. String theory requires ten dimensions to work out. So string theorists did calculations in model universes and then try to get rid of the six additional dimensions and describe our own universe. <laughs> but so far, just get rid of them. Succeeded, and no prediction of string theory has been proven in an experiment. So string theory did not reveal the nature of our universe. One could argue that in this case, string theory really isn't useful at all. 
science is all about experiments and predictions. If we can't do those, why should we bother with strings? It really is all about how we use it. Physics is based on maths. 2 plus 2 makes 4. This is true no matter how you feel about it. This reminds me of an old joke. Um, so a physicist or a scientist would say um, 2 plus 2 is 4. An engineer would say, yeah, we know it's 4, but I'm just going to go ahead and say 2 plus 2 is 5 uh, because, you know, just to add a little bit of extra safety margin to our thing. A nuclear engineer would take it a step further and say 2 plus 2 is about 1,000. <laughs> to give you a sense of how much safety margin we put in a nuclear power plants. And the maths in string theory does work out. That's why string theory is still useful. Imagine that you want to build a cruise ship, but you only have blueprints for a small rowing boat. There are plenty of differences. The engine, the materials, the scale. But both things are fundamentally the same, things that float. So by studying the rowing boat blueprints, you might still learn something about how to build a cruise ship eventually. With string theory, we can try to answer some questions about quantum gravity that have been puzzling physicists for decades, such as how black holes work or the information paradox. String theory may point us in the right direction. When used in this spirit, Classic. string theory becomes a precious tool for theoretical physicists and help them discover new aspects of the quantum world and some beautiful mathematics. I love the way they explain it, because I was wondering how they would go about string theory, getting into the complicated maths or mind-boggling postulates of what would have to be true in order for string theory to work, but this is good, this is good. So maybe the story of string theory is not the theory of everything. But just like the story of the point particle, it may be an extremely useful story. We don't yet know what the true nature of reality is, but we'll keep coming up with stories to try and find out until one day, hopefully, we do know. This video was... Hmm, that's interesting. So what do you guys think of string theory or just the idea of any sort of theory of anything? I've also heard the term unified field theory to try to just bridge the gap to have this one thing that just makes us all sit nice and convenient. But the universe is just a complicated place. It's is all I'm going to say. So it'd be convenient, but in a way it, it almost makes it more beautiful that we have all these wonderful uh, different theories and some sufficiently advanced civilization out there is probably thinking we got them all um, completely wrong. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. And hey, if you like this video, uh, please give me a like and go ahead and subscribe to join me on a journey to a clean nuclear energy future. Till next time.